Afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Maximize Your Membership session. Okay, so my name is Ness Gale and I work for the FSB as an operational support coordinator. And I'll just be telling you a few, a few things to do with housekeeping before we start the actual session. But we've got three experts with us today who are going to tell you all about how to maximize your membership. And that's whether you are a long-term member of FSB, whether you've just joined, or maybe you haven't even joined yet and you want to find out a little bit more about what's actually involved and what can you get from your FSB membership. So we'll be hearing all about that shortly from our experts. A um, little bit of housekeeping just to start, as I said. If you've got um, any questions, can you please put them into the Q&A box rather than into the chat box? Because there's quite a few of us on here today and the chat box will get very busy and we may miss the questions. So if you put them into the Q&A box, which you'll see at the bottom of your screen, and then at the end of the session today, about a quarter of an hour before the end, we'll go through all the questions and hopefully we'll get through all of your questions before we finish. Okay, so without further ado, I would really like to introduce you to our panel today. We've got Ali Young, who is an FSB member and she runs her own business as well. So she's going to tell you all about what she gets from the FSB benefits and, and what she's used. We've got Ray Abrahams. He's FSB Development Manager for Surrey. And he'll be telling you about some of the other stuff that FSB do that probably you may not even be aware of. And we've got our sales advisor, sorry, not sales advisor, our regional sales manager from London, Raja Naran, who's going to be telling you a lot more about the benefits. Okay, great. Well, um, Ali, could you just perhaps just give us a very brief, quick one minute introduction to yourself? Okay, thanks, Ness. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to this seminar today. I hope you're all uh, excited to hear about everything that you can get from the FSB. Um, I'm a business solicitor. I've been a business solicitor for more than 25 years now. Um, and I started in the corporate world in, in a city firm in London. Then I went to work in-house in a firm local to me down in Dover. I was in-house lawyer for Eurotunnel and the Port of Dover for 10 years. Um, and then 10 years ago, um, for personal reasons, I decided I needed to leave the corporate world uh, and work as a consultant. Uh, so I've been a self-employed consultant for 10 years and about five years into that journey, feeling a bit sort of isolated and lonely and out on my ear, um, I came across the FSB at a networking event. Um, and initially, the first thing that drew me in was this person telling me that um, I could get as part of my membership um, and included in the membership fee was um, investigative assistance if I had a tax inspection, which was, was worrying me at the time. I was paying my accountant for that service or for, for an insurance policy for that about £140 a year. And at the time, the FSB membership was about 120. So it was quids in. So, uh, so that's why I joined. But there's a, a lot more to it than that. And, and, and I'm, I'll let the others talk some more about that in a minute. But the big news for me was as I've been a member for five years now, and through the support that I've had with the FSB, I actually managed this year in March this year to launch my very own law firm, which I never thought would be possible. So I'm very happy about that and very pleased to be here talking to people about about that and, and how I got that from the FSB partly. Thanks, Ali. That's really great. And I know we're going to hear a lot more about uh, how you use the benefits later. Um, just quickly, before before I ask Rajan to introduce himself, I am recording this today, this session, so don't worry about taking notes or anything like that because I'll send you the link to the recording afterwards and you'll be able to just look at it in your own time as well. Yeah, so Rajan, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, please. 
Hi, everyone. Thanks very much, Ness. Um, so I've been at the FSB now for four years, um, looking after the Greater London region, which is in within the M25. Uh, my background is in business development uh, and lead generation across numerous different industries, uh, blue chip as well as uh, old fashioned double glazing. Um, so what I'm really looking forward to here and what I enjoy here is really helping small businesses actually achieve their ambitions and really, if you like, uh, actually show them the, the light more than anything else. Uh, but that's myself and I'll be happy to explain further uh, what we do. Uh, but that's me, Ness. Brilliant, Rajan. Thank you. And we'll hear, hear a bit more about you later as well. Um, and Ray, please, if you could just introduce yourself. Oh, Ray, I think you you might be on mute. Can't hear you, Ray. Sorry. I'm here now. I'm here. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I wanted to get the T-shirt, you see. You're on yeah, mute. Yeah, yeah, you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> two, two plus years on and we're still doing it. I apologise. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, I've been a member of FSB staff uh, for 15 years. Um, so you can imagine that over 15 years, I've seen quite a few changes with the FSB. Um, and, and and I can say that all those changes that have taken place, and some of them have been, I think, maybe a little bit painful, they've all been focused um, on the membership, improving the member experience. Um, the first seven of, uh, seven years of my employment with the FSB, um, I looked after the Greater London region, um, and the last eight, I look after uh, the region of Surrey. Um, so... All, all I'm saying at this point, the job provides me great uh, satisfaction because I am in touch with the members, I can say practically on a daily basis, as are my colleagues throughout the country, all of all of the development ma uh, managers, they all get to know the membership. So, yeah, it's great from our point of view and hopefully it's great from the member experience point of view as well. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ray. Well, that's our panel today. Um, I think we'll start with Rajan, actually, if we can. And if you could just perhaps give us a bit of an overview of, of the benefits and uh, what we can get as a member. Absolutely, Ness. So I think um, on my little whistle stop tour, if I, if I was to, to call it the four pillars, um, this is really the main ways that we can help and support businesses out there. Um, first one would be policy. Um, it's where we've come from. Um, it's where we originated when we were fighting national insurance contributions all those years ago. Um, and what it really means for business owners such as yourselves out there and our members is that we're tied to every local and national council. Um, so for example, in London, we were, I work with all 34 boroughs on a one-to-one -one basis with my development team and Ray will explain a lot more about how, how and what they do. Um, but what it also means is if you've got issues on a local basis, whether it be a case of business rates, parking, cleanliness, uh, antisocial behavior, we're in a position that we can actually have a louder voice for you and work through with that as well. Um, that actually leads me very nicely because what we the second pillar would be networking. Now, networking is pretty much a prevalent uh, part of business these days, especially over the last two years when we were all obviously working from home. So in London, we do 12 to 13 networking events across the London region on a monthly basis. We have in excess of 15 networking events going across the country on a monthly basis. Again, these are all very, very different. Some of them will have subject matter experts. Uh, discussing and offering help or guidance in regard to a certain subject. Others would be what we would call hardcore networking with breakout rooms and so on. But the idea is that you're able to network and actually grow your business um, business network itself, uh, but with like-minded people. So whether you're targeting areas outside of your local area, you're able to do that as an FSB member. Just use the, the FSB website and on the booking on the top right-hand side, very easy to do. The second, or sorry, the third pillar that we would go is preferential rates. So preferential rates, what does it actually mean? It means that what we're trying to do is lower your bottom line, make it cheaper and more economical to do business. So whether it be pensions and payroll, 
uh, insurance, uh, all the way over to the other side where you're looking at funding platform, merchant services, uh, business banking. All of these things are accessible to you in some shape or form. Because FSB have the clout of the membership we do, what it means to you is that we're able to actually get a decent and more importantly, a competitive price for you, which means that generally we can save you money in doing business itself. The, far, the fourth pillar or the final pillar, if you like, is the legal support and tax investigation protection that Ali mentioned earlier. So if I break that down in, in small chunks, the legal support is telephone based service whereby you're able to pick up the phone and actually get an answer to a question you may have. Um, my most common uh, saying is that you don't know what you don't know. As a business owner, you're able to pick up the phone, speak to customer services who would actually get an, a legal representative back in touch with you, who could actually give you clear, total advice, and you actually have a legal hub that actually backs that up online if you need documentation. The tax investigation part is almost exactly the same. It's one of those things that no business owner ever wants to be in under investigation with HMRC. What we're able to do is take the pain of it away, take over the case, you know, including paying your accountant for, for the paperwork that's needed. But what we're able to do is give you re legal representation and advice right the way through the process at no extra cost that actually you know, impacts on you. So in theory, those four pillars are really going to be how we can help you. And what I'll be able to do is go into a little bit greater detail individually on them and highlight some of the ones that you might have missed out on there. Thanks very much, Jess. Thanks very much, Rajan. That's great. So as you say, yes, yeah, so a whistle stop store, uh, no, a whistle stop tour. <laughs> and I know you're going to go into a lot more detail later. So that that's great. Um, if anybody's got any questions that you think of whilst we're going along, just add them to the chat, uh, to the Q&A box. And that would be great. We'll look at those at the end. Right. Well, thanks very much, Rajan. We're going to turn to Ali again. Um, Ali, perhaps you could just go into a bit more detail now about what you've gained from your membership with, the, with FSB as a small business owner. Yep, of course. Um, I'm going to repeat myself again and Rajan, but it, I, honestly, I can't emphasize enough uh, what good value that that tax assist um, insurance cover is because it, it, it's, it's essential if you're in business to have that. Um, those sorts of inspections are hideous. Um, they're very time consuming and they're very expensive, even if you manage to prove that you've not done anything wrong. So, um, yeah, sorry to sort of repeat myself again, but that was the first thing that drew me in um, and I've, yeah, just saved money on that straight away. Um, but it didn't take long for me to being a lawyer, I'm very interested in the legal hub, um, not not least just to sort of compare it with the sort of services that I offer. Um, so I, I was all over that uh, quite early on in my membership years, it, five years ago, and, and since then it's only improved. Um, it's regularly updated. Um, the, the lawyers that are working behind the scenes with FSB are extremely high quality lawyers. Um, and the uh, templates that are available on the legal hub are, are phenomenal. Um, so, you know, I, I, as a lawyer, have to pay quite a lot of money uh, to have access to libraries of precedent documents. Um, we don't start with blank pages. No, nobody does that. Everyone starts from somewhere. And um, for the first sort of couple of years, I um, compared the quality of the documents that I was accessing at a, at a much more expensive level with the templates that are available on the legal hub. And as I say, they're regularly updated so you, you can trust them and honestly can tell you that the standard is, is equal and in some cases even more practical and more relevant for the small business owner. Um, so often, and, and I don't know if people on this uh, call have ever tried to access legal services before, but um, us lawyers have a tendency to overcomplicate things. 
And um, if you're a small business owner, number one, that's really not what you need because you need things to be kept relatively simple, um, but it's also unaffordable. And uh, therefore what happens is that small business owners you know, don't take the advice that they need and get themselves into difficulties. So um, the legal hub is worth its weight in gold. Um, the templates, as I say, are, are very uh, easy to understand. They're reliable. Um, you do obviously have to build them a bit yourself, but um, the way they're presented makes that relatively easy to do. Um, and then as well as the templates, as Rajan mentioned, you have this um, helpline. And again, not to be a cynic about my profession, but um, the reality is that I know there are other helplines out there. Um, lots of people tempting people in with free 15 minutes or half hours of legal advice. But my experience of those, and not just my experience, but people that I've worked for, clients' experience, has often been that you phone those numbers and by the end of the 15 or 30 minutes, you're none the wiser. Um, and it's a little bit of a sales tool really to, to get people to, to buy into something else. That's not the case with the um, advisory line on the FSB. Their lawyers you speak to on that will properly understand your question. And I have never had feedback from anybody that they didn't get an answer. So. Um, so again, you know, accessing lawyers in real time with real questions um, as part of your membership, not even being charged a, a little bit extra. Um, I, I recommend that. So I, I work for startups sometimes, but I do also work for bigger businesses. It's, it's usually when they get a bit bigger that they can afford uh, me to come on board and help them with with their business as it's growing but as a startup that's more difficult for me to help people um, at a rate that they can afford so I always signpost the FSB to anybody that approaches me and says um, you know what can I do I need all this stuff and I don't know where to start um, well you start with the FSB legal hub and you will really do no better than that anywhere else so um yeah that's 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 my view of it um I don't know how much time I've got Ness I do witter on um and I know I've got another section so I can come back to some other stuff but um shall I just say one more thing and then yeah um, yeah no you, you've got you've still got a little bit it's, you've got a minute or so okay, so lovely well the, don't want to mention the dreaded c word but um during that period uh, again the online networking the FSB so quickly transitioned into online networking um, and I know the rules were changing constantly and, and there were a lot of local initiatives I'm down in Kent um, and there were a lot of local initiatives in relation to helping small businesses but once again the FSB you know was right at the sort of leading the charge of that um, and I went on an awful lot of online networking um, with the FSB and actually across the networks as well. So not just in Kent anymore, but all over the country. Um, and I met within that, I met a virtual assistant who I really gelled with um, and she came on board on my business um, sort of the back end of 2020 and has been with me ever since and I would never have met her you know in, in all the time on the world I would never have met her but um but yeah she's been absolutely a godsend to me and has helped me grow my business in the last year and a half um again all, all thanks to the FSB um she's also a member um and that is still ongoing so just because we're sort of back to normal whatever that is um the fsb is still doing those online events and i know a lot of people prefer them so you know that's all brilliant as well a lot of the other networking i i take part in um, and most of that has gone back fully to face to face and i think that's a bit of a shame really because quite a few people do prefer the online and it's very efficient and in, in, in networking and all the travel time and all the other times so um so yes that was something again that was a, a lifesaver during during the last few years Thank you, Ali. That's great. I'm, I'm so um, pleased that you met your virtual assistant through some networking. And uh, she's also an FSB member, isn't she? So fantastic. So both of you sort of collaborating and working together. Lovely. Well, we'll hear from you again a bit later. Thank you very much. Ray, I turn to you now and perhaps you could tell us a little bit of more about what, what happens sort of from a development manager point of view. I thought you was going to say, Ness, unmute yourself first. Right? No. <laughs> 
Ali, that was a, a brilliant member testament um, that, that I just listened to, and I, I, and, and I thank you for it. I'm, I'm just going to add a little something to that, because we, we've got a member in Guildford, Surrey, um, who, who is the managing director, of, of which is now a very, very large company. And during the pandemic, he, he rang me and he said, Ray, look, he said, you know, it's not my practice not to pay bills because we've built a, a fantastic reputation here. But... For some reason, I've, I've got this horrible threatening letter that says, if I don't pay this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to receive a county court judgment. Um, and he said it was one of those situations where you're meant to opt out. Otherwise, it just continues. Um, so he said, I just wondered if, one, if you could recommend one of your members, he said, um, a solicitor that I could just speak to on the telephone about it. So I said to him, PJ, there's no need to do that. Why don't you just ring the legal helpline? And he said, really? He said, I didn't realise that's part of the membership. Anyway, I um, gave him the, 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 the free phone telephone number. He rang, he got in touch with me the following day. And he said, I can't believe it. He said, that call has probably saved me £600 in legal fees with our solicitors. Um, the result was quite simply, I, I have to pay it, Ray. He said, but... Um, but I've paid my membership now for the next couple of years. So that, that just tells you about member benefits. Anyway, enough of that. Let's, I, I want to just refer back to um, Rajan um, because he mentioned that the FSB um, was primarily formed as a lobbying and campaigning organization, which it was. Um, and for that reason, um, us development managers, that if you like, we work in the field, um, we are very, very well known and engage almost on a daily basis with, as Rajan mentioned, the local authorities, the county council, decision makers such as MPs, um, the police and prime commissioner here in Surrey, obviously there's one for each area, the National Apprenticeship Service um, and business stakeholders as well. We are actually so well known that we were almost friends and and for that reason you know we can we can speak to decision makers on a daily basis we don't have to make an appointment and if i can just mention that you know we don't want to mention the c word but during that pandemic uh, there were various grants available to businesses um uh, some were easily accessible some not so easily i'm sure people on this call um maybe had some difficulties there but um, members reported their uh, issues to us and, and, and we took the matter over and I'm pleased to report that 99% <clears throat> excuse me, were, were successful results, so we're very proud of that. Um, and we even helped out with um, some of the, well, the difficulty in accessing some of the uh, business-backed um, bank loans, which, which I'm sure plenty of you on this call had a lot of difficulty with um, and is still ongoing today. So yeah, we are we, we are there to, if you like, help you wherever we can or point you in the in the right direct or point you in the right direction. Um, just recently to give you a little case study, a little case study, um, we organized a meeting with a member's local MP on a local issue. It was regarding um, rent arrears. Um, created during the pandemic and fortunately the landlord did listen to the MP and the matter was resolved so so we're very proud of some of some of our achievements in fact we're very proud of all of our achievements our members regularly appear on tv and radio in, in interviews um, because they too are proud of the service that the FSB provides um, Turning now to the network in which Rajan um, mentioned. Yes, we have regular networking events. These are across the country, not just in Surrey. They're in every area that you live. Um, and they are now a mixture of um, uh, virtual and uh, in-person face-to-face. In Surrey, we're having now uh, two in-person face-to-face uh, breakfast meetings um, a month. Um, they are hugely popular, not just from the point of view of boosting your business or, or creating new business contacts, but I'm pleased to say that lots of our members have actually made friends with other members, and which is which is quite astounding. When, when you actually look at the social side of the FSB, it's a massive, massive achievement. 
Um, I regularly receive uh, uh, emails regarding the FSB benefits, um, praising FSB insurance for the insurance rates that they, they quote. I regularly receive those communications. During the pandemic, uh, FSB care was very, very welcome um, when it came to stress and well-being um, and mental health. Um, and just generally, the, well, the legal helpline is, is just a, a must. Um, the reports I get back about the legal helpline are just incredible. So from our point of view, I can promise you that the staff backup is a great component of the organization's success. And my promise is that we are always here to help wherever you are in the country. There is one of me um, together with our support staff. I'm pleased that Rajan mentioned our customer uh, uh, service as well, which is based in Blackpool. So there's an army of staff that take care of members. Please make sure, please make the best, best possible use of your membership. That's me, thank you. Oh, no, just before I go, I'm gonna ask Rajan a question. Is it true, Rajan, that um, there's also uh, some financial support if you're called for jury service as a self-employed person? Yes, indeed. Um, it's part of, obviously, one of the many hidden um, benefits that you have, uh, Ray. Um, so you can get up to £100 a day in, in regard to relief for, for jury service. Uh, we've we've had this conversation just earlier this morning whereby someone was told to, to become a member uh, they didn't and they're now in that position so they, they're going to, they're getting the state 60 pounds so they're they're actually almost you know 50 percent worse off than they were um, so yeah I mean as I say it's one of the many many benefits and as, as I keep saying you don't know what you don't know and when you're in a position that you're the business owner the buck stops with you and so use that legal advice. You've got a hundred thousand pounds of it covered there. Call them every day. Just double check that you're doing the right thing, because that's exactly what we're there for. But that that's your answer there. Thanks very much, Ray. Thank you, Rajan. Thanks very much. And uh Ray, and thank you very much, Raj, as well, for um going through that, because a lot of people don't know about the jewelry service thing for sure. Right, okay. Um, we're going to turn now quickly to Ali again, and she's going to give us a little bit more of her experience as a member. Hello again, me, Wittering on again. Um, yeah, again, I'm not going to say again about the templates and the legal help one because I think we've all said it enough. But as a fellow solicitor, I take, take so much respect for the for the lawyers that are sat behind that. So that's really, really great. Um, and I mentioned the online networking, but yeah, the face to face stuff is great again. And again, really quickly, the FSB have managed to, you know, mould those two things together. So you do have complete choice. Um, and there's so many, I mean, I don't, I can't make all the ones that are available to me. There, there are so many different choices in terms of what networking you want to do. And some of them have a specific focus, which means that it's, it, it, it has a sort of real sense of purpose. Um, other is just your, your, your classic, just getting to know each other. Um, and there's a real feeling of support around the FSB and the members. And I think that's, that's really nice. I mean, I, I've networked in bigger sort of organizations and chambers and um and all, all, it just it doesn't have that quite same sense of personal touch um because most of our members are just our, our business owners um and we are really you know leading the charge of of all the sort of being on the front line of of what's happening economically and you know it has been so hard over the last few years um to have that sense of belonging um people that you can just like like ray said they become your friends they become people that you can talk to outside of the um networking that you can build those collaborations and just help each other um you know it, emotionally it's a it's a level of support that um 
I hadn't had in the first sort of five years of my business. And, and even in the first stages of FSB, um, I was a little bit sort of absent sometimes from the networking. I a bit of a sort of island think I can manage on my own. But, you know, COVID really hit a lot of us. And um, and it was the point at which I went, hold on a minute, there's, there's this stuff available to me already. Um, and now I really, really need to make the most of that. So I did. And, I, and I'm determined that I'm going to keep doing that because it's just so good for you and your your well-being and your journey as a business owner to have that feeling of support around you um and it's so nice to know like like Ray was saying that there is somebody out there um trying to lobby for the role of the small business owner in the economy and you know the statistics for how much of the country is made up of small business owners are, are huge you know we're, we're responsible for for a lot of the economic generation in this in this country but I felt as a small business owner that nobody was really listening to me that I don't really matter I'm just a small little cog that nobody really cares about and um, and again, being part of the FSB, you feel that that actually there is somebody speaking up for me and talking about the challenges that I'm facing and interested in what I want you to know about what's happening in my world and and, and where the difficulties are. Um, and again, I just don't even know all of the benefits. And that's 10 years in or how many years in it is now. I lose track. But um you know, they mentioned, Rajan mentioned the well-being, well-care, I think. I, was, I, I see, I don't even know what, the, what it's properly called because I haven't accessed that yet myself. Um, and, and the other thing when you were speaking earlier, Rajan, was the um, business banking side and the other maybe fat financial um, support that might be available. Again, I haven't really accessed that yet either. So, um, you know, I've, I've, I've learned myself today that I need to um, keep in touch because, you um, the benefits are huge and they are sometimes you don't need them all the time but never forget that the FSB is is there and use use that as your starting point when something happens in your business reach out and um, use them as a starting point because they probably have something that will help you um, and if they don't then the people that work for the FSB themselves have a huge network so they can often signpost you elsewhere. So if there isn't something within the FSB, then they will know where else there is to go. Um, so, yeah, I, thanks for having me on. Thanks for letting me um, talk about my experience. And thanks for teaching me some other stuff that I will be knocking on the door about next week. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ali. And, and I think that's really important, that whole thing about FSB being a big voice for small businesses. And that's exactly what we do, which is, which is great. And because, you know, collectively we are big, we can have an influence and we can change things, make things happen. Lovely. Thank you very much. We'll go, as promised, back to Rajan now. And he's going to tell us a bit more again, a bit more detail about some of the benefits. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Ness. Um, so I, I thought I, I would just highlight um, a number of things that have been spoken about very recently, uh, but major maybe incentives that you have as a business owner that you didn't really know about. Um, so let's touch on the first one, Ali. So we, we, we give you a free business bank account with every membership. So if you're currently banking with NatWest, Barclays, uh, TSB, or any of the other high street banks, you're looking at a charge of a minimum of, let's say, £20. Well, that's £240 a year that you're paying a bank where we're actually saying to you, you know what, become a member and you'll actually get that for, for life for free. So first and foremost, think of that. The turnaround is very, very quick at the moment. I think it's about 10 days. Uh, they do actually beat that, but generally about 10 days and they can have you set up. Um, that's one of the key ones that obviously make our membership what we would call a no brainer, because generally most memberships will actually be cheaper than the 240 pounds that you would save on a bank account. Um, you also mentioned a little bit earlier, Ali, about care. It was something that people have never really thought of as a benefit. So through through that lovely C word in the last two years, we, we had uh, inundated with calls in regards to our care line. 
So what is care? What does it mean to you? So if you're someone like, like me uh, and you need a chiropractor every so often to crack it back into place, it's actually covered. Uh, if you've got dental appointments, op optical appointments, it's actually covered. Um, what you've also got there is mental health care. And what that actually means is that you have a human being on the end of the phone being able to talk you through maybe the issues that you see, the problems that you're facing. And sometimes that's all you need, someone just to put you back onto the right track. That's available to every single member out there. And if it's not a, a benefit that you haven't looked at, please make sure it's the first one that you do look at because it is a right of membership for yourselves. Um, another one that was absolutely imperative in cost saving is FSD insurance. It was mentioned earlier, what most members don't realize is that it's part owned by the FSB. The reason for that is that we're trying to pass on that cost to yourselves, i.e. reduce the cost of doing business. Um, quick anecdote for you. We have a very famous chicken shop in um, South London, Stretton to be exact. It's been there for a number of years. We went in there about three years ago and what we were able to do uh, for that chicken shop was actually reduce his insurance by 40%. And if I tell you he was spending in excess of 50,000 pounds a year, that's a saving and a half. And we were able to do that. And not only that, we've been able to maintain him as a member and keep those reductions in there. So something like insurance, again, put a note of it. It doesn't cost you anything. They can advise you. They can see if you're actually overinsured, if your indemnities are too high which has been the case a lot around uh, the last couple of years. So it does give a reflection on what you're paying out. So it's something that you definitely want to make sure that you do look at as well. Um, another one that, that would really think about is that you've also got with the FSB, as, as Ray mentioned, new benefits. So we have a number of benefits that are actually on the verge of being launched as well. Over the four years I've been here, I've seen a number of benefits disappear. The reason for that is what we're trying to do is match what you need as a business owner. Now, I call members of the Federation, you're, you're members of an entrepreneur, entrepreneur's membership. Yeah. And that's what your membership's about. All of you are single handedly building businesses, growing yourselves, putting your stamp on the world. And some of you will be growing it with multiple different businesses, with multiple different partners. So FSB are actually in a position to help you do that. We have a membership called an associate membership. Now, what that is, is that if you have, like many business owners, people that wear different hats within the business, you're actually giving each and every, other, every person the support they need as and when. So, for example, if we had a if I had a business with four business partners and I looked after maybe the, the everyday running of the business, I had someone doing the finance, I had someone else doing the HR, I had someone else doing the back office, for example, I could make the associate members for the person doing the finance so they can tap into all the benefits that financially would be beneficial for the business. I myself would be able to tap into the legal hub and the HR side of, of FSB membership. And my colleague over there could tap into the other side to look at where there'd be cost savings with some of our partners. So that cost is 95 pounds for an associate membership, but it gives them their own access to, to the membership itself. And it means that they're associated to yourselves. One other question that was very, very commonly asked was, well, I've got, you know, two or three different businesses and I really want to be in a position to cover them all. So do I need a membership? One membership covers every single business you cover. So what that means is if you do own or are a business owner in three different parts of three different businesses, you're able to get business banking for each of them, insurance for each of them, advice for each of them. So what it does is it actually makes sure that we can keep you airtight, compliant, and actually help you grow. Um, that's my sort of answer, because I think most of the other things that people have actually seen with the FSB they've been using, what I can't um, forget is networking, though. 
guys, networking is where you're going to grow your bottom line. It's about being able to tell people who it is, who you are, what you do, where you do it, why you do it. And that's where passion comes in from. Um, and at the end of the day, going forward, it's not going to change. Whether it's virtual, whether it's physical, you're going to have to market your business rather than spending all of that money on Google and Facebook and, and LinkedIn. You are your biggest asset because you have the passion because guess what? You started your business. So start telling people about it. Get on to as many events as you possibly can and, and spread the word. And FSB will try and help you do that. If you, you know, if you are one thing that Ray has mentioned is we do use members for events as well. You are our subject matter experts. You are the specialist in your field. So if that is a, a subject that's going out there, we want to be able to tap into you as our members to tell everyone else what you know. Um, so do remember to use your development manager as well as the benefits. I hope that's been beneficial for most of you. Uh, as I say, uh, as Nessa said, we've got a question and answer basis uh, section coming up. So anything else, I won't hesitate to, to answer for you as well. Thanks very much. Thanks ever so much, Rajan. That was that was great. And I see we do have a few questions. There was one I just wanted to, to just ask you quickly um, before we go on to the into the questions is um, debt chasing. We've got something that helps with debt chasing, don't we? And I'm not we too do sure. Indeed, about it. Yeah. So we've got we've got a debt recovery service. Um, it's got two sides to it. You've got a debt recovery which has set templates that you're able to download as a member and action the, the debt itself. And you've actually got support whereby it's it's where they would actually manage the debt and actually retrieve it for you. That side of it is, is payable, but with a reduction or a reduced or preferential rate. Uh, but the legal ones that are actually downloadable are actually very, very powerful. The success that we've seen in them over the past few years is very, very powerful. They're very formal. So it, it, it's, it's that wake up call for a business owner going, right, I need to get this person paid. Um, but generally those bits are available. And again, as you said, Ness, it's a benefit that people don't even realize that we have. So yeah, debt recovery, you know, have a look online, uh, have a look on your legal hub. Um, one thing I did forget to mention, the legal hub, um, because the legal hub is really there for four key components. You've got guides, you've got DIY documents, which are legally binding. And as legis legislation changes, they update as well. You've got videos and you've got useful links. So whichever uh, subject that you're looking in, you're going to have one of those key performance in there that will actually help you, guide you going through something. And when you're lucky, there'll even be videos just to explain exactly how you fill in the forms and so on. Yeah, that's really brilliant. And that legal advice for through the helpline is 24-7, isn't it? it? It is indeed. I mean, one thing, as I say, is just pick up the phone. I mean, whether it is for immigration, whether it's to do with, you know, uh, yeah, um, sorry, health and safety, whether it's to do with, you know, HR, whatever it is, if you do not know, pick up the phone it's not costing you anything it's a free phone call and the advice that you get is legal so you're actually saving that 100 pounds an hour that you would be paying a solicitor yeah. to, to find out something that you already knew you knew the other benefit is on the legal hub you have all of these uh, documents like contracts of employment that as a business owner you can download put your details on and actually put it into place so you're not actually costing yourself using legal representation afterwards yeah fantastic and you know if you're anything like me you wake up at three o'clock in the morning and you suddenly think oh no and you start worrying and it all goes through your head so wonderful to know that you've got that there yeah um, one thing i will say is we we, we get a spike normally at about three o'clock in the yeah. morning yeah which Something about three in the morning. Close. <laughs> <laughs> and they try and deal with everything that's happened in the evening. So, yeah, we're, we're there for every type of business out there. Lovely. OK, Rajan, thank you so much. Well, we are sort of now at the set of the uh, question and answer session. I'd just like to thank you all ever so much um, for for what you've done so far. Let's have a look at the questions that have been coming into the Q&A box. Um, I think the first one that came in was was about um, 
Does the FSB tax investigation cover apply to just the company I have my FSB membership through? And actually, you've just answered that, haven't you, Rajan? It, you know, it's not, it's not the companies, it's the person. So if you've got three different businesses, all of those benefits will transfer to all of them. Exactly that. The membership is personal to yourself as opposed to be your business name. So anything that uh, you're associated with will be able to give you advice on no problems at all. Great. OK, um, we have another question here about um, someone's just heard about the access for work for self-employed um, and need some help with the application, asking for IT and VA assistance. Would that be something that we'll be able to, to help with? Um, Ray, would you, would you know that one? Or? Yeah, this actually, that's, um, can you repeat that, Miss? I've not heard of that. Yeah, access for work for self-employed. Um, needs some help with the application. So asking for IT and VA assistance, is it something that we would be able to help with? I think customer services will definitely be able to guide in, in regards to what needs to be done. Um, what, what I would say is either the development manager or the regional sales manager for whichever area you're in, will be able to probably signpost for any members that we, are, that we know that are VAs, um, that would be able to possibly be able to assist as well. So I think just go back to your region first, whichever region it is. Uh, if not, customer services, and they'll be able to sign close to you, no problems Yeah, at all. thanks, Rajan. Good idea. You know, this, is, this brings up a point, actually. We seem to forget about customer services. That is a major part of the FSB now. It never used to be years ago. When I first joined, there wasn't such a thing. Now we have a great big department of customer services. And I noticed they tweet out every morning, customer services is open for business. And then and then they tweet out, I think, in the evening when they close at five o'clock, say, we're closed, see you tomorrow. So yeah, please, all you FSB members, remember the customer services uh, department is there. Um, and they can answer most of those type of questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, we've got a question about jury service. Can can you give advice if someone's called for jury service and it would cause severe damage to the business? Yeah. So again, legal advice that needs to be going going straight through to customer service. Explain it's to do with jury service they'll be able to get a legal representative to give you the black and white of your exact situation and be able to guide you and tell you what your next steps are. Right, that's brilliant, okay. Uh, another question here, would it be possible to explain the benefit of adding my family to FSB care? Is that just a one-off payment for life and does it only cover spouse and children? Uh, Rajan, you'd probably be the best one for that one. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. I, I would need to get clarity or I would suggest get clarity from FSB care themselves, because I know there is a, a cost. But I'm not entirely sure if it's a one off or if it's a, a reoccurring. But again, customer service, if you want to speak to FSB care, they will call you back and they'll be able to advise and really answer your question, which is really what they're there for as well. Yeah. And I know if you're the member and you, you have a, an issue, like you say, you need some chiropractic treatment or something, you've got up to, I think it's £250 per condition, isn't it? It is. And that's on an annual basis. So that that's, you know, rolling all the way through. That's amazing. So, yeah, someone like myself that spends £55 on a chiropractor, <laughs> yeah. that's well, not right. heavenly. But yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just one of those hidden hidden secrets that everyone forgets about um and it's only when you wake up and your back's not right or yeah, you know, you're yeah. driving home and your head's not right and, and just pick up the phone just get it sorted out because they're there to do it and it's not costing you anything yeah well it's fantastic i mean you, you pay more than cover the cost of your membership with just one one session really or a couple of sessions wouldn't you exactly exactly that uh, we've got a question here what's the investment policy of the business bank um, this person is looking for fossil fuel di divestment and zero carbon pledge. And so that's something we're all kind of keen on now, looking, working with organisations that are a lot greener, aren't we? So, we, we, you know. Indeed. Indeed. So um, the co-ops uh, pledge is actually on their website. They are trying to be carbon neutral. Um, they're looking at redu reduction like every other high street bank. What you'll find with co-op is because of their collaboration with the post office, it actually, you know, they don't have as many high street stores. They don't have as big a print, uh, footprint as others. 
Um, what we are looking at as a business, obviously, is we'll, we'll continually keep looking at other opportunities. So when, when there is you know, incentives like that from banks, we will definitely be looking at them, investigating. And if it does make good business sense for our members, then we'll put them in front of you as well. So it's probably on our agenda as well as uh, the banks. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And the next question you've just answered because it was which banking provider is available to FSB uh, memberships. And as you say, it's the, the co-op. Um, somebody's asked a bit more about FSB care. What do you mean when you say dentals covered? Is, is the cost of treatment covered or is it just an advice line? Um, so there would be a certain amount of uh, treatment that are covered, uh, but the advice is obviously there. I, what I what I say to everyone is literally, it's fantastic that everyone's hearing what we're talking about, but these are the things that literally just put a, put three bullet points in front of you after this, pick up customer service and just go through them because you're going to hear it from the horse's mouth. They're going to give you the, defin the definitive answers but more importantly than that, they're probably going to tell you more than I can uh, because it's their product. Um, yeah, yeah. What I try and do is help you give a, a whistle stop or a, a rounded view. But the benefit, as Ray's mentioned, customer service are, are, have been amazing. Um, and what they really do is their tool is to signpost you, get whoever you need to speak to involved with you as soon as possible. Yeah, lovely. Um, are the templates automated? And if not, would it help if they were? Well, right. So automated. So, uh, for example, the templates are look at when we when legislation changes, they update. So mm -hmm. they're, they're already set up there. They're all um, PDF that you can actually edit right the way through. Um, but yeah, the automation, I'm not sure what they entirely mean by that. OK, <laughs> thank you. Um, Ray, this might be one for you. Um, a company who converts classic cars to electric. Wow. Um, keen to see what resources might be available about exporting advice and export specialists through the FSB. And I know that we have had programmes with, with um with the Department of Trade and Industry and, and various sort of network, uh, sorry, not networking, um, events and stuff and webinars. So Ray, do you happen to know that? Well, I don't know the answer to the question and, and I, I really like the way uh, Rajan said that, you know, um, our members are our experts because that, that's good. I'm giving a little example about trade here because um, one of our Surrey members, um, our office in Westminster, um, identified her to speak at the US Embassy on uh, US uh, stroke UK trade agreements and the problems that she and the issues that she was incurring and, 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 and the plus side to it all as well, which is absolutely brilliant. So, yes, in our and we've not mentioned this, we also have an office in Westminster. We call it our present parliamentary office um, and they are our policy advisors that are housed in there. Um, one of which is um, uh, the uh, senior policy advisor for international trade. So I'm just going to explain quickly then how the process works. So the member that has asked that question should ask the question of their development manager of the area, which in this case of Surrey is me. Um, and then that, that, that question, I will take it to our senior policy advisor of international affairs. Now, if they can't answer that question, then they will take it much further and they'll even get an answer from government. So that, that's the way the process works, because um, we're, we're, we're not all experts. Um, we are perhaps experts in, on certain things in our own right. For example, I, I think I became an expert on um, uh, discretionary grants during the uh, <laughs> during the pandemic. Um, so, yeah, so I would say to that member, Wherever you're based, you've got a development manager, go to them. I was going to actually mention this as well, and I did forget. Um, every area has a development manager, so every area has one of me. But all of us development managers, um, we share information on a daily basis on the Teams channel. So we're speaking to each other. So throughout the country, we're all sharing best practice, case studies, and, and, and trying to get the correct answers. So for that member, go to your local development manager. I, I want to also mention this. And if, if that member is not a member, all the more reason to join because you will get an immediate answer. Okay. Thank you, Ray. That's that's really good. So I know in the southwest we did a, a collaboration with um, 
it, I think it was the Department of Trade and Industry, and we run like a six week course well, for a couple of hours every every week, and it was all about export and export advice and so somebody will have those contacts and so as Ray said if you go to your development manager we, we can actually find out and get you linked up with those people in any case. Okay brilliant. Um, oh when a face-to-face -face networking event starting in Kent? <laughs> well, Ray do you want to take this one? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, because I, I cover Devon and Cornwall, and we are just gradually starting to, to do some face-to-face -face events. And I know Surrey are doing quite a lot, Raise the development manager for Surrey. So I imagine that, you know, in Kent, uh, your development manager for Kent will be will be doing the same, getting out. Ellie, Ellie have yeah, you, have you heard of any? Yeah, I was just going to go and have a look myself at my emails. I, I think there have been a few. Um, I think they're predominantly still online at the moment, but... Um, my understanding as well is that it's 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 a gradual process over the next few months yeah, yeah. Uh, all being well um obviously we're not completely through the c word yet are we yeah, I no. think we have to so i think <laughs> there's a little bit of caution um you know it's still a lot of it about as they say but i know there have been a few i haven't been to any personally myself i'm still pretty much focused on the online ones but i've i'm sure i've seen emails inviting me to things that i just haven't actually responded to so um but again finding your regional development person will give you the answer to that question yeah exactly that's, that exactly that's not me that. copying out we're Thank doing you. the same. We've we've had a few in London. I was at one last week uh, and the week before as well. Um, but the, I think the answer is it's going to be gradual. Uh, we're not going to definitely rush into it. What we have found, uh, and I think Ray will back me up, is that we've had a massive success with regard to the virtual events. Yeah. Um, we've had the attendance that have gone up. Um, so it means that more people are able to do that. Um, so we don't want to miss out on that. At the same point, we don't want to be in a position to just put all our eggs in one basket. No. As we say, we're not completely out of the woods. So let's let's be cautious. We're on the line of cautious always. Um, but your development manager for your each area. And incidentally, if you guys don't know who that is, just pick up customer services. Just tell them that you, this is where I live. Who would be my development manager or can you pass me through to them and they'll be able to help you yeah and the other thing is that we send out i know you probably get if you're a member quite a few different emails from us but look out for one in particular which is it goes out weekly from each area and it's called business bite size and it's a newsletter and it lists all the events that are coming up in your area um, in the next few months probably right up through to September at the moment and it also lists any national events national webinars and things that are taking place so it's always worth having a look at the bite size we've just got a new system and it's gradually being rolled out and our bite size instead of being a, a fairly bland need I say boring kind of uh, communication it's now going to be colorful lots of different um lots of different links that you can click on colorful and much more engaging so have a look out for that so that will tell you when events are coming up i think we've got one more question so hopefully we've just got time for Here we go. Uh, look, oh, oh actually uh, now no one mentioned that no one mentioned about the hard copy magazine oh no no <laughs> our, our, <laughs> yes, Ali's holding it up there, our first voice <laughs> first voice magazine which which is also available um it comes comes through to every member is it is it on a monthly basis uh bi-monthly bi-monthly i've just i just got mine through actually finally you should mention it but i just got mine mine through today it's still in its envelope so i haven't had a chance to read it but uh, it's also available online as well and uh, that's actually another resource for you and, and, ju and just story. to say about that um again us development managers we are we are invited um actually it was yesterday to invite our members to make a contribution to the magazine so yeah. there you go um yeah. you know th th yeah. this just gets, gets back to rajan and what he said was we are extremely interested in the member expertise yep we got one more mess uh question which i'd like to cover really quickly before we go is there any assistance we'll cover with bad debt insurance Yes, yes, there is. Uh, your first port of call would be to call up FSB Insurance themselves. 
you'll you'll have an advisor on the phone uh, and they'll be able to advise on your specific um, circumstances. Uh, but yes, there is. I mean, they've they've insured a tank to go down a high street in, in a little village. Wow. Um, <laughs> so it could be as obscure as that, um, all the way down to someone that's had issues in the past because of bad debt. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't mean anything on the reflection. We'll look at every single case. Uh, and again, it's part of your benefit. We're trying to help you do it. So get in touch with FSB Insurance and they'll be able to get an advisor to you and actually give you a definitive answer on that. Fantastic. Well, we've actually reached the end of our allotted time. Um, I'd like to thank Ali, Ray and Rajan for your time today and for your presentation, giving, giving everybody some, something to think about. And I'd really love to thank everyone for coming along and joining us today. I will send the recording out to you, as I promised, after, after the session, so you can have another look through it. And we hope to see you again at one of our networking or our webinars or a face-to-face -face event very soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Ness. Bye, Thank guys. you, everyone. Thank Bye, you. Ali. Thank you again.